hoping that I'm not going to be sounding coy because generally we start off and with something like kia hiwara, kia hiwara, kia hiwara ki tēnā tuku, but I just want to change that a little bit. And I want to introduce us to kia kiwara. And principally because we are talking about ocean space. So I want to read kia kiwara, kia koutou, kwa neke neke mai, kei runga ki tēnei kaupapa, kei roto ki tēnei kaupapa, kia kiwara, me rere tika a tātou reringa, mai ki o koutou kainga ki tēnei kaupapa. Nō reira, kia kiwara, kia kiwara. And in saying that, I also want to read to you at the end of my presentation something that was requested of us at a hui in Tauranga here um, a couple of years ago at a place called Waitaya. So, oh, there we go. I think, yeah, I put that down and I forgot about it. So that's my introduction and that's my acknowledgement to you because you've flown here. And if I'm looking at that manu there, we are not too unlike that manu that, that the other speaker in that whare spoke about this morning, Haki, Jack, about those ones that have traversed our oceans, our henua, and somehow always return home. So further to that, I want to then say that the faces and the names that are on the next slide here are indeed oh, no, I'll talk about that after time. These ones here, and those are only some of the people involved at home because there are five in one school and five in another. And they took it upon themselves to address um, this thing called mōhio and mātauranga in our spaces, in our places. And the genesis for us was affecting change in our behaviour and in the behaviour of those who will have future influence. And so through um, our marae, we kicked off into our journey of trepidation, fear, into this thing called maramataka, ngā tohu. And I suggested that our marae was Waiora and it would be a good place which would give us that maru and it would also be a symbol of us working in our white spaces. And the next part of that is te rarawa o ngā mahi rangahau and that is the converging point for us of all that we're working with and which will lead into the future. So our kura in Ngātaki, our kura in Te Hapua, we've taken control of our kura as an iwi and as much as they still run the curriculum through the ministry, we have determined that the practice through curriculum needed to be changed. And so we affected change by the use of something like ruia, ruia, opea, opea, fidia, fidia, tahia, tahia, kia hemoa ki te kākua kua. And that is a matara of a tūpuna, and his name was Tūmatahina. 
and his huaranga tira was tangi rere. So us using our own as the example, ruia, to go out and search. Opea, to bring that knowledge forward, collected. Fidia, to weave that knowledge and how we weave it. Tahia, for everyone's benefit. So that suited our purpose really well. We own that. Our tamariki own that. They are proud of that. So further to that, they were already in a space of their place of learning what was in that environment. So I decided that because I was doing some work on Dune Lakes, that they might want to just start in that space, know that they are valuable spaces like no other spaces in the world from Tamaki Makoto North, and that we had some of the most pristine of those spaces. And so we kicked off in that work environment that was mine, and then we slowly changed it to where they were choosing and deciding what was good for them the place based learning stuff. And so my next slide. Oh, sorry. Can I, can I just go into the place base and then go into that one? Um, the shifts and changes to our school curriculum started in 2016, in fact. And so where we look to incorporate a place-based learning approach that used the local environment in Ngāti Kuri Pepeha or Matara or Waiata or any of those taonga, we leapt into that, we dove into it and we didn't care what the curriculum was saying to us, although they wanted us to be corralled. We didn't want that. And so our iwi trust board decided to say to the ministry, we will run our schools, thank you very much, move over. And so they have, and so we've decided best what is good for us in our place, in our space, and what is good in the learning environment for our tamariki. So one of the things that we all want to do and successfully is to know who we are. And so they know who they are in their space. They are proud of themselves in that space. And we are starting to build their confidence. So if we go to there, we are in our spaces. We are successful in our spaces. We are not mataku in our spaces. We are confident to discuss those. And the language as well has changed. And what do I mean by that? We are not, even if we're looking at Ngā Tohu in our work together in Wānanga, we are not saying, oh, the grass is green. They will say that the light that is shining upon that grass is dappled. It will then be an extension for them, and so for all of us, and into our kainga. So the ambassadors that they are now, for what we believe, into the home, is making changes there also. So, their natural world, they are comfortable in. They don't feel so kore take in. They know how to ruku in. They know how to ruia. They know how to opera. They know how to fidia. And the benefit is tahia. And we are getting the benefit of that right now. And so I want us to look at the kinds of relationships outside of the classroom where we were running for two years a weekly and fortnightly um, class with Auckland Museum scientists using technology which I don't know how to use but they are smart with and engaging with different environment, different people different language and them taking on board the smarts to actually have that dialogue with scientists. You can go to the next one, eh? With 
their kaumātua, with their queer, with composers of music, with a lot of other people. And from that, we have this, during this time, we started to generate our own wanderings around how we could pull all of this learning together by using this thing called maramataka. Because I don't want to have maramataka stuck out and just this round thing with words on it. Because when I was being raised, my father and my mother didn't ever say that we will use marumataka to know when we were going to be planting and at which moon. They talked about it. And so that's how I was raised. And when one time Dad says, oh yeah, there's this thing that we use, it's called marumataka, that was strange because I knew how to grow kumara and when. I knew when to go fishing, the moon. I knew the tuna. I knew the planting. I knew all of those. But to have attached to it this thing called maramataka was foreign. And so we are reverting our tamariki to where it's a natural part of who they are, recognising that there are tools available, but so that they can I say it's normalised? It's natural, it's how they are, who they are in their space. They can grow pingal, they know the like, the cycle of a pingal. They know the toe, they can describe that. And if you say, so what is the moon for that? They will say, we do the seed collecting at this time of the year. It will take a few days for those to germinate and it will take this long for them to grow and then we can let those grow and we can hokato those into the hinua and it will take so long for those to grow before they start producing and that's a, maybe a two year cycle. But that kind of comfort, I think, if we then say to me, oh, you can go out and do that, work that, they are comfortable in that environment, that electronic environment. I'm not. So how do we bring comfort to them in a space that I know intimately? And everyone in this room will say that they've grown something. So what is the tau? And we understand that. So I have to express using their tool something for me to be understood by them. Okay, and one of the things that we did was even in our kura was tiro and pumahara. What is that light outside? By whom? And we developed all of those, and so did our tamariki. So what was described by Kelly and by Waiaria is what we did in our kura as well. And it made a shift again from what is this thing called observation through tiro, through the skin, through the taste, and differently through the kanohi. There was another thing that I want to go back to, and that's that po that was up there before, where one of our teachers thought that using that po there across the Pāringaringa harbour, if they stood behind that every morning to look across the harbour, how does that harbour change? And so they did that, and they still do that every day. And we do that every morning, our reference to our tiro. And we grow our pūmahara. And I'm, I shouldn't be just talking about our kura, because our marae is transitioning as well. Because if it's 
fair enough or right enough for our tamariki to do that at school? What is happening in our marae and how is that being prepared as well to receive more hiotanga? And I am going to leave that there for a little while. And this thing called matauranga. Because they're different. Totally different. And so, looking through that lens across that harbour, day after day after day, and appreciating the uniqueness of that kapata, kapata, kai, is valuable because it is definitely a food basket, that kete, of kai for them. Our next one, I want to go to where the, tri uh, the diamond one is, please. Oh, there it is there, because we started prior to this using someone else's symbols and trying to make sense of them, and they were. And that's describing the pino. And I'm not going to do much more than that, because I've kind of described that. But if we went through that toe for every plant, it wouldn't be too different. If we look at the kōwhai, it'll be the same. If we look at the kauri, same. If we look at the rata moiho, the kaikomako, same. So after that, we decided to make changes. And this was shared um, earlier but then even using different language like tamanui te rā needed to be transitioned because it was only sun prior to that, the sun. Ngā tu, and it was the stars. Wai and ngā marama. What I'm saying is that our kupu are what we need, can I use the word, to feed ourselves with? Because part of using, and it's not bad, it's not what I'm saying, other language, such as English, we only get that one dimension of our world. They, though, now, look at that thing called tamanui te rā. That's that globe that's ever-changing because they, they've proven it themselves. So that life cycle, we've gone to this cycle and ngā, tōtu, ngā tohu, our practice of kōpeka evolved and through the work done we created our kōpeka dao that explored all four of these elements as a teaching and learning tool in our schools, resources to support kayako understanding was created also. And part of that embedded tiro into our, all of our practices in our kura and going into our marae, into our kainga as well. So every morning they did this. I don't know how hoha they became of it, but it's working. It becomes naturalized in their life. One example of our mahi with the kids is building their understanding of the movement of Tamanui Te Rā between his two wives at the time of the autumn equinox. This learning was developed through conservation, uh, conversations, observations and drawing. So they did those kinds of things. But the major shift was this, this power. We needed to make the changes too. And our teachers needed to make the changes for it to make any real sense and the value be gained for our whole community. And one of the things that we've done, we've got a ropu in Auckland and it's called Ngāti Kuriki Tamaki and they can 
know all of the kōrero. They can tell you all of our narratives. They know up there is kapo wairua, and up there is te wairua, and up there is pihwane, and up there is hikurua. And so we introduce the thing called, and we've all done it, hikoyoto pepeha, walk your talk. And so our tamariki walk their talk. They go out, and before they even that, I, I'm, and I'm doing it with some of our teachers right now, um, we've just grown our school to year 13. So that's a big thing in a rural community such as ours. Our tamariki don't have to travel four hours a day to school and home. So we've taken charge of that. We've created learning spaces for that growth in our, in our numbers. And the teachers there are new, so they don't know Ngāti Kuri. So that is important for them to know. And so they say, well, you can tell the story. I said, no, you can. So how do we do that? What's happening with me today? And we have to grow comfortable, familiar with the narratives in our kura as well. It's an expectation. We grow that. And we've got new teachers, you know, we've got one person there who's got a PhD and probably micro-tourism or something like that, I don't know. <laughs> but we have these people and if the expectation for us is to be the responsible people for our future, then we have to do something better than what we did in the past. And one of those was to take control by learning ourselves, our values, before we can start actually delivering them. So we've done that. I want to now, because I, we were, I was challenged to do this and I didn't know how to do it, to compose something, something at Waitaya. And, let's, and I'll, I'll do the translation as well. And it is e -re -re <coughs> Sorry. E re re, ka ruia ki te ihu o hine raumati, ka ruia ki te ihu o hine takurua. He ahua aha e nei mātau, ka fiti fiti, ka fiti fiti, ka marama, ka marama. He mātau e mārangarangai nei e i ahu mai hea. He manu ha hautanga ki te whenua he manu o tai. E ahu tonu ana mai i o mātou tūpuna, te kāhui tara, te tere pū mahara. Marama mai te mauri nuku, marama mai te mauri rangi. Mo te mātou e rāranga nei, ruia, ruia, opea, opea, whiria, whiria, tahia, tahia. So I'll translate that, and um, yeah, this is a strange country for me. Let us rise aloft to fly and soar, to seek and search in the times of Raumati and the times of Takurua. What is this thing called Matauranga? To know, to make known, to understand and to be understood. Knowledge that rises up and encompasses where does it come from? It is like a bird that is akin to the land. It is like a bird that is akin to the tides. To strive to reach the peak, to be soared and to reveal, to know. Let this essence be brought from Papa Tuanuku. Let this source be derived from Ranginui. It is this tapestry that is woven to be constant, spreading out, scattering, then gathering and reforming 
becoming as one again. So that is, those were my thoughts about Ngātohu, my participation in growing who I am in growing who we are in Ngāti Kuri. And I think what generated um, for us in Ngātaki was from the our marama, our marae. But as well, the question that we've asked ourselves is, and everyone's asking that, as was asked by Tanya this morning, where to from here? And it's not, well, I don't think that's a relevant question, to be honest, because we have to set our dao. There is no more putea. So we have to look at our own resources to do that. We can grow, though, relationships such as we have with our scientists and others um, in Ngāti Kuri, in our kura, at our marae, and hoping that because of um, any of the work that we have done will be a enable us to do the next step, which is I think for a lot of us at home there, we're get getting 80 new families back in our community in the next two years. We're all asking the same thing. How do we resource those families? 80 of them in two years. That's 320 people to 500 new people in our community. Infrastructurally, what happens? But in our kura and our learning, what happens at our marae? How do we grow those people back into their kainga? That is what Ngātohu is about, I believe. Anyway, kānui tēnei mōkui te wānei, kānui te mihi kia koutou, kānui te koa, kua tau mai, ahau, kei roto ki tēnei kaupapa, Ne korero pēnei, kei mua i a koutou i te wānei, te koa kei roto i a hau i te wānei, i kite e nei kanohi, mō te tirohanga, mō tātou, kei mua ki era o ngā wā kātou, kātou, kātou o rite ki te manu, kuaka, e rere tika tunuana ki tērā wā kāinga, ki tēnei wā kāinga. Ko te korero, O a tātou tūpuna, tau atu, tau atu, tau mai e. Nō reira kia koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, a kia ora hui hui mau tātou. He pātai. I was under time, wasn't I? <laughs> oh, pātai mai. No, no, no. No. They, they, they function as they do, but they don't tell us kind of how to do that. We all meet all curriculum standards, their curriculum standards, but we are embedding what we feel is tika for us, pono for us. And one of the questions that I was asked by those ones that come around and do a review, what's that? E Eero, that's right. Why don't you just go and get a board of trustees? And I says, why don't you keep quiet? <laughs> why, we know what your system has done to us. So what we are providing now can only be better than that, don't you think? What did they say? What could they say? Yeah. Well, that was my response anyway. Sorry, did they answer your question? Oh, I, I, I. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you once again for that example of walking the talk. Um,